In this video, we'll see how to execute a low voltage load flow calculation and what's necessary in terms of configuration of the loads. The LV load flow study case should be activated and we can see the single line diagram of a low voltage network consisting of four feeders supplied by one transformer station. When planning low voltage networks, we can account for the stochastic behavior of the consumer demands and this approach is widely used to consider a worst case approximation. This load represents a building consisting of two household units where based on a type assignment a coincidence curve definition is used. The coincidence curve defines what the maximum consumption of a single unit is and how the coincidence decreases over the number of units of the same type. Coincidence curves can be defined using tabular input or a formula. In this case, the formula approach is used. This means that for this low voltage load element, although the simple arithmetical sum of the 30 kilowatts would result in a 60 kilowatt consumption for the network, the consideration of the coincidence curve already leads to a decrease to below 40 kilowatts for these two units. Working back towards the transformer station that supplies this feeder, more and more consumers, that is, more units of the same type, are included and so reduce the coincidence value. So the more units that are supplied by a particular branch, the smaller the contribution from each unit is to the power that must be transferred through that branch. We can now execute the low voltage load flow calculation. The command can be found in the distribution network analysis toolbox. In this example, we want to account for the worst consumption case and so have scaled the generation elements in this network down to zero in order to analyze the capability of the network to supply all the demand. On the Advanced Options page, the Scaling by Curve offers us the possibility to quickly and easily change the scaling of all the elements that use a particular coincidence curve. For now, we'll change this scaling factor to 1. Let's execute the command and look at the results in the diagram. Here we can see the reduction from 60 to 37 kilowatts that we already have due to the consideration of two customers of the same type. And once we come to this connection point where we have now a total of four customers supplied in these two buildings, the consumed power is not 37 plus 37, that is 74 kilowatts, but is in fact 47 kilowatts. The same approach is used at every connection point where multiple loads with the same coincidence curves are supplied. Now, what happens with different load types as shown here, where electric vehicle charging points, although also modelled as low voltage loads, have different stochastic behaviour? These loads use a different coincidence curve definition, which is configured via a tabular input. This curve represents 11 kilowatt charging points and accounts for the duration of the charging procedure. Note that the reduction in coincidence is only applied for numbers of units greater than 2. At the connection point, the different load types are simply added up arithmetically. So here, 22 plus 37 gives 59. And the same applies for every connection point where different types of loads are connected. Returning to the command dialog, we'll look again at the scaling factors table. 
let's set the scaling factor for the household loads back to 0.5. It should be noted that these values are operational data and so will be stored in the operation scenario if one is active. This means that combinations of scaling factors for different coincidence curves can be quickly reconfigured by using sets of operation scenarios. When we now execute the command with the reduction of the household loads, we see that our contributions from the corresponding loads has been reduced to 50%. This allows us then to assess the overall network in terms of thermal loadings and to analyse the voltage profile, for example, through voltage profile plots.